ask you what you made of Paolo Di Canio's departure from Sunderland this week. Did it surprise you? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very shocking, isn't it, really? You know, you got five games you just spent, God knows what you spent in the, in the summer and, you know, he's gone already, so... I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I don't really bother what other people do and what other people say or what, you know, the rumours about it all. It's just that, you know, how long how long an opportunity is that, really? But that's life. We know it. He knows it. I know it. We all know it. So, you know, that's the the pressures of this world and being in the, in the limelight, you know. And um, it's learning to deal with that, to be honest with you. I don't know if any of you saw that programme on Gazza the other night. I mean, I was in floods of tears myself because I don't blame him for that. I, it's just awful. He can't go anywhere, he can't do anything. He don't know where he is, he don't know who he is, but we all love him the bits, don't we? And it just goes to show it's like George Best all over again. I think us football people have a, have a, a duty to make sure that our young lads don't get like that, you know? And it's just heartbreaking to see him like that and we all wish him well, don't we? But that's that's a problem, not not a football game, not a, not a score, not this. That's just for me to go in and be upbeat and have another go in it. But you know, let's all let's the football family get older, something like that, and make sure we can help as much as we can. So you know, the Canio's another victim. Everybody, when he first got the job, this is that, this is this. They love his interviews, they love all of that. But you know, at the end of the day, you're judged on performances, you're judged on your players helping you or not working against you and you know it's certainly not an easy job and I wish him all the best in his next one so do you talk to young players about um, problems outside the game is, is, is yeah it? yeah I do yeah I just don't know if there's enough support there to help as they're learning I don't know if there's enough going through it you know we always knew he was he was a, a lively fella didn't he you know everybody will tell you that he's a sort of character but you know surely we, we've got to put things in place to not let those type of things happen and, and help people as they're going through it really I think football has a duty to be like that particularly with the, the limelight everybody gets now the coverage of it so you know, we're going to have to help them learn how to deal with all of this Where do you think that support should come from primarily from, from the clubs? From I think, the I think it's the clubs I think if you look at Manchester United they, under Sir Alec they've been fantastic at it you know, he's, he's checked everybody and if you read his books, he's, he's driven around their houses and kicked doors in and made sure that they've behaved themselves, you know. But, you know, but I, I'm just talking about trying to get things right with a support network for these players. I, I watched Clark Carlisle a few weeks ago in that wonderful programme where he opened up about his problems he had and, you know, everybody thinks that, oh, they're spoilt, they're this, they're that. But, you know, it's, a, it's not an easy life, so let's try and put things in place with all this money in the game to make sure we can help the people who go through these things.